Are you guys ready for a very early preview of Tweeterhead's Green Lantern? Hey guys, welcome back to the sanctuary. So Chad at Tweeterhead contacted me a few days ago and told me he had just received a production sample of Green Lantern and would I like to be the first to uh, give you guys a look at it. I want to emphasize it's a production sample. It is not necessarily what you're going to get when you receive yours. Production samples are sent to the statue maker, the company, to take a look, to iron out any problems with it so they can contact the factory and say, hey, you got to fix this, you got to fix that. This statue isn't uh, due to ship for months. So there's still time to fix and tweak any little problems. There are a few I'm gonna point out. Overall, it's a really nice piece, but there's a few things that need to be looked at. But please, don't freak out. <laughs> it's a production sample. It is not the piece necessarily that's gonna be shipped out to you. So let's take a close look. All right, so, uh, well, I am gonna point out uh, a few concerns about the piece. I wanna emphasize that none of them have anything to do with the figure of Green Lantern himself, which I think is flawless. It's an excellent representation of Hal Jordan. The portrait is really nice. The portrait came attached to the body. I assume it would be the same uh, when you receive yours. But again, as it's a sample, I don't know that for sure. But I think that the expression is really nice. I think it totally nails Hal Jordan. There's a sense of determination there. Just really, really nice. The pose is good. The musculature, really nice. The hues of green and black. It's more like a, like a charcoal gray black maybe. Are really spot on I think. The ring looks good. Now one thing I will point out uh, which surprised me is if you look at the tweeter head site uh, the regular or collector's edition, whatever you want to call it, configuration includes this arm and this arm without the lantern. The arm without the lantern is not included in the box and there is no spot for it in the insert. Now if you look at the Sideshow website at, the, at this uh, particular piece, it doesn't include that piece that uh, arm without the lantern. It shows the regular configuration as you see it here. So if you're expecting four arms, uh, you might only be getting three. I don't know if that's a big deal. I think most people want the arm with the lantern, but it does not appear that an, a left arm without the lantern is included. Take a look at the base. One thing that you always have to decide on a Green Lantern base is do you make the construct translucent as Tweeterhead has done here or do you make it opaque which is what Sideshow did with their most recent Jon Stewart premium format Green Lantern where you have that kind of uh, it's kind of like a milky green construct rather than a translucent green. I like the translucent because it contrasts well with the figure. It tells me this is a construct, whereas if they had made it opaque, um, it looks too much like the figure. It has that, you know, you can't see through it, obviously. So it sets it apart from the figure by making it translucent. And I like the idea of the entire base being the construct. And as you can see, it's a double-barreled cannon. And I've heard many collectors say, hey, what's the story behind this? They want to know the story where Green Lantern creates this double-barreled cannon, which is a good sign. It, it, uh, 
has made people uh, spark their imaginations for how this scene came to be. Let me spin it around. The sculpt is really, really nice. The paint is really, really nice. You know, we had problems with the paint on Superman from Tweeterhead when it originally came out. And I have to give Chad props. The paint since then on every piece has been really nice. Super, super cool. This is number 15 in the superpowers line. All right, let's take a look at the exclusive configuration. All right, so I've switched out the right arm, which now where the fist used to be, there's this uh, hole for the peg to go into. And then if you go to the back of the statue, that's where the other end of the ammo belt goes. Now, I want you to see that, that end of the ammo belt. It has a peg there, but as you can see, this it's not a big deal because it's in the back on the bottom. You can see the peg through the, the uh, what I assume is PVC for the ammo belt. Anyway, so that goes in like so. Make sure it's all the way in. And this is the biggest concern that I have with this production sample. All right, take a look at that end. There's a possibility a small piece broke off from that end. And the reason I bring that up is because it doesn't really fit. I mean, it goes in, but it doesn't hold. It pops right out. So it may be that this piece, or this end here, is supposed to have a little more length to it that would better fasten or better peg in to that right hand. That, that's a significant problem that needs to be remedied. I don't think it's user error. It's all the way in down there. This is the direction that it goes in the photos on both the tweeter head and sideshow sites. So that's a problem. Now, um, Chad had sent me a photo of the sample, I assume it's this sample, with this inserted, like it's fine. So I don't know if something broke off in transit or what happened. Um, there is not a metal peg on this end as there was on the bottom, like I showed you. I think it's just the PVC is supposed to insert into that hand, but it just pops right out. And to be honest, um, I have to put a little stress on it to even get it in position. It wants to be over here. So that's, that's a concern too. Again, this is a sample. This is the time when problems like this get fixed. I assume this is not going to be a problem when you receive yours. Here he is displayed with Superman and Batman from the Superpowers line. And it occurs to me that while some companies have problems with scale, Tweeterhead doesn't. They seem to nail this 1-6 scale every time. There doesn't seem to be any difference between the head size on these three figures. really nice. Now Tweeterhead's also done Wonder Woman and Martian Manhunter. Uh, so we're waiting on Flash and Aquaman to complete the Justice League of America set. Those have not been even teased yet, so we don't know when those are coming from Tweeterhead, but Chad, you got to do Aquaman and Flash. <laughs> 
to complete that set. And maybe throw in the atom. I really want the atom, even if he's half an inch tall. So that's my take on the Tweeterhead Green Lantern production sample. It's just a sample. I'm sure the kinks are going to get worked out and you'll have a really nice new entry in the Superpowers line coming to you. Well, it's still actually several months out. Uh, there are other pieces coming before this, I believe. Robin, Starfire, and maybe Batgirl. I can't remember if Batgirl's before Green Lantern or after. But it appears that in 2020 and 2021, there's going to be some nice pieces coming from Tweeterhead, and I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be really cool. Uh, otherwise, please subscribe if you haven't already. Please take a look at my website, detective27.com. I've got comics for sale there, both raw and certified by CGC. I also have some statues there for sale. Otherwise, I will see you on Facebook, and I'll see you on the, uh, on the message board statue forum. And uh, please enjoy your time, your quarantine time with your family, and stay healthy, and I'll see you real soon. Take care.